Hey, what's up YouTube? Dan here. Wanted to do a video today on drones and the GoPro series. And I actually picked the Solo 3DR drone for, for several reasons. Number one was cost. Uh, Best Buy is actually running a great deal on those right now where you're getting extra props, extra batteries, and the drone for three, no, $299, excuse me, $299. So it's a, it's a nice solid platform. In addition to that, I also love actually using the GoPro cameras on my drones. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the DJI's and, and uh, the Mavic is absolutely amazing. I, I think I might have to pick up one. But I like having control of the camera. I like knowing that I can easily upgrade my camera without trading in or junking my drone. Um, it's a personal preference thing. I also enjoy the fact that I can take my GoPro off of my drone and use it for all of my other videos, which is what I'm using right now to make this. I just feel like it's more versatile for the money that you're spending. And I, I know a lot of the drone manufacturers are actually coming out with the detachable, in, including the GoPro version of the drone. Um, but again, I'm going cost effective, or in my opinion, cost effective and most versatile for the usage. I wanted something that I could use across multiple situations that wasn't going to be a bank breaker because honestly I don't know how much I'm going to get to use this as we see how these laws are, are shaping out and, and people and their personal feelings towards the drone when I'm flying it you know I, I don't want to make a large investment right now until I know what the future of this industry is going to look like but this is to help you maximize the settings on your GoPro for capturing great aerial photo and video. And though these settings aren't perfect for every situation, I think you'll find they'll cover the majority of the situations when you're out flying. As I said, I'm dealing specifically with the Hero 4 Black Edition. Um, I think you're gonna get basically the same features with the Hero 4 Silver Edition. Um, most of the settings that I use when I'm flying, I, I'm not actually shooting in 4K, which you're gonna get basically the same in the Hero 4 Silver. So let's just jump right in and, uh, and go through everything. Let's talk resolution. I myself prefer to actually run at 2.7K at 48 frames a second. What I find with that is you get that nice buttery smooth footage that everyone just goes crazy for nowadays. You do have some limitations and some uh, some things to watch out for when you're doing that. You obviously have to be a lot more smooth on your yoke and your speed up and down. You're going to find that, uh, that a nice, slow, methodical flight is actually going to be best with running this frame per second and at this video resolution. Another perfectly fine setting that I've also used, and I'm, I'm actually going to show side-by-side -side comparison in the video, is shooting at 1080p, and I usually do that at 60 frames a second. I think you'll find that you get uh, a little more freedom there. You don't have to worry about the speed as much, and you don't have to worry about your turning. You're going to get a, um, you're not going to get as jerky of a video footage. Again, I personally am at that 2.7K with the 48 frames, but you know. In a pinch, or if you just feel better at your 1080p, you are going to have a smaller file size if you're bringing that in and ingesting it on Premiere Pro or iMovie or one of those. So, so there are advantages and disadvantages on both.
So let's talk field of view. I always set field of view on medium. And the reason I do that is, is especially on the solo, I don't want the legs in my video. I, I feel like it detracts a lot from the feeling that you're getting from these very beautiful, very cool shots that, you know, up until we had drones, we couldn't get these awesome aerial photos like that. So I want it to feel as surreal and as open as possible. So I find that that medium field of view will give me exactly that. So now we're gonna talk about low light. I always have that off. I do not want any extra processor thought from the GoPro going into anything when I'm flying. I want it to just do its job. I don't want it actually changing my frames per second to adjust to the lighting that's going on at that time. I feel like you're gonna get a lot more changes in the environment and you're gonna have a lot more post-editing work to do anyway. Spot metering, again, off. Actually, you cannot have that on when you set manual ISO, which we're gonna cover in a minute. So that's definitely an off. Let's go ahead and talk about ProTune. I love ProTune. So I'm gonna say ProTune on. And my reason is, is that you're gonna get a higher quality image, you're gonna have less compressed and more color neutral video that lends itself extremely well in post-processing in my opinion. If you don't plan to do any post-processing of your video though, you could just do the traditional leaving ProTune off and, and pushing this straight out to your social or using the GoPro app. Let's go ahead and talk about color for a minute. Uh, typically, I have GoPro color turned off. If you're looking for more vivid, rich um, colors in your video, that's fine to leave that on, but what I prefer is to bring that into Premiere Pro and adjust my colors there. So I'm gonna go with the neutral flat uh, when I'm shooting and adjust that as I see fit in post-production. Again, if you're looking at hurrying up shooting your drone footage and coming back and pushing it up, having the GoPro color is, is easily the way to go. Let's go ahead and talk about sharpness for a minute. I actually typically will go with low, occasionally medium, never high. And the reason is, is I, I don't want it to look so uh, sharp that it, that it gives it that unrealistic feeling. Like, I, I still, I want like a beautiful scene and, and I wanna make sure that I'm capturing the moment, but at the same time, I also don't wanna take away from the authenticity of the moment. Uh, I want it to feel clean and natural. Uh, again, going back to the, you want that smooth, buttery feeling, you want rich, vivid colors, but you know, you don't wanna blow it out so much that it looks like fake. Uh, Hollywood made video or or maybe you do if, if so obviously you can play around with that sharpness but uh, me personally I'm gonna say go low medium occasionally if it, you know play around it a lot of it's gonna be up to you so as I said um, I, I prefer to have ProTune on um, and I always set the ISO at a maximum of 400 now what that's going to do is it is going to give you maximum exposure sensitivity while you're minimizing that noise in your video the higher shutter speeds a lot of times can give you that real jerky footage or even that nasty dreaded jello effect so let's talk about white balance white balance is really important for for numerous reasons i mean you you don't want your video to just look completely blown out but you also don't want to give it that dark look i personally like to set mine at 5500K. When you're doing this, it's going to be pretty safe for daytime drone flights. Uh, auto white balance can cause color shifts, which uh, you know don't look good in your video, and they would be an absolute nightmare to deal with in post. So I found at the 5500K, you're going to get that nice, smooth, consistent color. And again, this works best for normal daylight flight. All right, everyone, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure and hit that like button or even the subscribe as I plan on doing a lot more of these videos in the future. We've had nothing but rain here lately, so I haven't had the drone out or the GoPro out, either one. Um, but I'm hoping to change that here really, really soon. And uh, if you have any comments, questions, please leave them below. Would love to hear from you and I'll be sure to answer them. Again, thanks a lot.